He is young and charismatic. For tomorrow will never be like today. This is Pastor Lesejo Daniel, and he runs Raboni Ministries. His sermons are always fired up, attracting young and old. Daniel claims to heal the sick and even cast out demons. Daniel's followers are totally under his control, but some of his methods have raised eyebrows. Congregants are made to eat grass, and Daniel insists it's an instruction from above. He refused to take questions from journalists, but used this service to address his critics. If I am possessed by a demon, and if I am a witch or wizard, please stop talking from far. Come, I'm ready to know that you're coming to deliver. Daniel claims to be a prophet and says this is just the beginning of many mysterious things that will happen in the future. The average gathering at Pastor Daniel's church is representative of South Africa and all its neighbors. Rich and poor come here in droves to attend his sermons. And the fact that they eat grass is not an issue. It's nice. It's like uh, macaroni pasta. It's very nice. I might not have uh, eaten the grass or whatever, but if it happens that one day I eat the grass, it means I would have perhaps or maybe have the same level of, of Holy Spirit manifesting in me. Daniel says none of his followers have ever fallen ill from eating grass and claims it's a sign of God's doing. Malungi Elopui, Harangua. we have been forgiven what should be our corresponding action I'm glad you asked we should forgive and extend grace to everybody else no wonder Matthew says and when you start praying if you hold anything against anyone forgive him so your father in heaven may forgive your sins for if you do not forgive neither will your father who's in heaven forgive your transgressions as a Christian you got to forgive now that said and please don't get offended the new F word in the word church is forgive. I'm going to say it again. The new F word in this church is forgive. Now that said, do me a favor, touch your neighbor and say F you. God, I wish I had. God, I wish I had 25 people that say I forgive you for whatever you said about me. Not just your neighbor, look down your whole row saying, F y'all too, go ahead and tell them. You know what, y'all looking at me crazy. Would you do me a favor, take your phone out, text all your exes and say, I'm at church, F you. Forgive you for lying on me and talking about me. Pastor, my mama don't like you, well F your mama. My family don't like you, F your family too. You know what? Jump on your feet, snap your fingers, say, help everybody in here. God, I wish I had five people that would jump on your feet and high five six people, say, F you, go ahead, tell them, F you, go ahead. High five somebody else, say, F you, yup, F you, yup, F you, F all y'all, F you. God, I wish I had somebody that would have a little church with me. And thank God that he forgave you for all your sins. And now you can forgive everybody else. Some of the answers lie in our sexual values. Pastor Mike Scruggs admits he's not your traditional pulpit preacher. We try to uh, make it relevant, uh, make it, you know, straightforward. We don't try to, you know, sugarcoat anything. His sermon series might raise a few eyebrows, but on this night it drew a packed house at the Light of the Word Ministries on Coleraine Avenue.
We talk about sex, we talk about drugs, we talk about faith, uh, we talk about, you know, uh, relationships, everything that, you know, that people are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. This series is called The Battle of the Sexes with some rather interesting visual props. With our bed, you know, on one side of the bed, you're dealing with, um, you know, what men are desiring, what men want. So you have your stripper pole, um, you have your video games, your, your sports. On the women's side is, you know, obviously the bed is orderly, everything's neat, everything's in its place. It's all about love, it's all about, you know, um, teddy bears and candy and rose petals and being wined and dined and being cherished. Don't spend your whole life wanting to be married. He says his church brings in speakers and focuses on real situations and brings godly solutions. He says it's more than provocative sermon titles. We push the envelope, that's true. I definitely want people to not take things out of context, you know, because we, I think people in general have a tendency to just take one piece and say, okay, well, um, he's going to hell and he's, you know, he's wrong. We want to talk about it. We just don't want him to guess at it or, you know, assume certain things and, you know, it might be wrong, it might be right. We want to literally take it, you know, take it straight forward and talk about it. I take ministering to teens very seriously. In fact, I give my life for it. Take a look. Con los terroristas. They do the Harlem shit. Seriously, I do. Con los terroristas. They do the Harlem shit. It's church like you've never seen it before. You come as you are. The pastor bears his soul and more. Let's be more listening. Let's let us hear what, exactly what you've got planned for us, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's okay to drop in and drop your clothes. On this day, most were covered up because of our cameras, but they insist they're comfortable receiving the word of God from a pastor in his birthday suit. I really don't think God cares what you wear when you worship. The the thing is worship. But ask people outside this congregation about a naked church, and you'll get this reaction. A whole... Oh, my goodness. Do you think it's disrespectful at all? Yeah. No. It's not re dis disrespectful to God. Absolutely not. I wouldn't be here. Some of the biggest moments in Jesus' life, he was naked. Uh, when he was born, he was naked. When he was crucified, he was naked. And when he arose, he left his clothes in the tomb, and he was naked. If God made us that way, how can that be wrong? Why do they do this? Well, the chapel is part of the Whitetail Nudist Resort in Ivor, the only year-round nudist resort in Virginia. It opened back in 1984, and prayers are being answered here in more ways than one. Management here says before anybody passes judgment, the naked truth is in this down economy, business is up 12%. Obviously, you were doing something that people like. Business is booming. More than 10,000 people visited last year. Forbes magazine reports the new travel business can rake in $800 million a year. What does being a nudist, what does that do for you, sir? It's a very comfortable, I'm comfortable in my body. 
even with the scars and everything else. I'm it's very stress-free. <laughs> These folks say being nudist has nothing to do with anything sexual. It's about being free of societal judgments. I come here and, and you know, you look around, you, you can't tell who's unemployed and who the millionaire is, who the corporate executive is and who the plumber is. Because there's no pressure to be anything other than who you are. And they say that applies even if you're naked in church. They're caring, they're understanding, and they're, they're community-oriented, and they're family-oriented. Uh, we have one of the nicest, most involved chapels of any place around. I'll put our chapel up against just about any other church around. I consider it a privilege and a gift that God's given to me. In Ivor, LaSalle Blanks, 13 News. The Bible said he wore no clothes. See, demon-possessed people have no moral standard about them. You know why he ran around naked? He was crazy. You say, well, I'm going to go half naked. Well, you half crazy then. Now, I'm telling you, when you get saved, bless God, you got a moral standard about you. You put some clothes on when you get in the presence of God.